Hey there, you're listening to or watching Picture This. This is our photography podcast, and you can get it anywhere that podcasts are available. It's nice to listen to in your car while you're cleaning. Maybe you're doing some laundry, working out. <laughs> get it. Yeah, whatever you're doing, it's <laughs> fine. Whatever you're doing. So Apple announced a new iPhone, and as per usual, every new iPhone, the biggest advancements are around the camera because these are increasingly the camera that everybody's grabbing. And that is a big part of what's pushing people to buy the next generation. So while camera companies are kind of struggling to figure out how to get people to buy new cameras, Apple's worked it out and they get better and better. So it's time to readdress it. Uh, but first, let's just thank our sponsor, Audible. Audible has the best audiobook performances, the largest library, and the most exclusive content. You'll feel something when you listen. Learn more at audible.com slash photo. That's audible.com slash P-H-O-T-O. Thanks for sponsoring us, Audible. I, I'll talk a little bit later about my experience with the book It, because I can be one of those people who's like, the book is better than the movie. Oh my gosh, you're one of those people? You should have warned me. Uh, so if you aren't familiar, the new iPhone X, well, a Apple announced a new iPhone 8 and the iPhone, X, uh, I'm sorry, iPhone 10. It's written iPhone X, but they say iPhone 10. Here's what's new in the iPhone 10, which is the thousand dollar model. Uh, it's also, first, it's a new price point. It's more expensive. These keep getting more and more expensive, but they're still cheaper than a typical camera. Do you suppose they'll last less time too? Like my phone, la my iPhone lasts like a year and a half before it starts to go downhill. Oh, yeah, it could be the shorter and shorter lifespans. Oh iPhone like 10. Flies. You'll need a new one in one month. So it has faster autofocus. The telephoto lens is 36% faster, which means it's basically gathering 36% more light. The pictures are, pictures are sharper. There's less noise, especially in low light. There's more dynamic range. And the telephoto lens now has optical image stabilization. Both lenses now have it, whereas before only the wide angle lens did. They like have their finger on the pulse of what photographers need. Yeah. And it's kind of scary for professional photographers. They also upped the video capability. So now it will record 4K, 4K 60, at 60 yeah. frames a second and 240 frames at full 1080p HD. So that's like eight times <laughs> slow motion. I said that it times. also records at 25 frames per second. Oh, in case you are producing a film. <laughs> yeah, someone said in case you want to impress your hipster friends. I think yeah. it was like Gizmodo or something. Ha ha. Funny. <laughs> Uh, one of the, they have a lot of new software advancements and some tech that we've never seen in cameras before. The front-facing camera now has a little infrared camera, so it's capturing different spectrums of light that will actually allow it to sort of do some depth mapping. So now on the, you can get the portrait background blur effect on both the front and back cameras. Wow. And if you're a photographer, this is the effect that you get from using a fast lens, like maybe an 85 millimeter f1.4, f1.8. And it's been one of the big advantages. One of the reasons people have been using real cameras still is so they can blur out the background. Compositionally, this allows you to basically remove distracting background elements, focus the viewer on the subject in the foreground. Yeah, it separates your subject from the background and kind of cleans up your background. And that's been a problem with iPhone photography for a while or smartphone photography, I should say, is that it's difficult to take, I want to say, quote unquote, real pictures because you don't have the control over your background, your depth of field. Um, but the iPhone X has taken this beyond what we can do with our cameras. You can now selectively blur the background or even completely eliminate the background. It's, it's amazing and it's freaky and it's an example of computational photography, which is something we're going to see in a lot of over the next 10 years. Something that really, I believe, has the potential to kill off a big part of the market for real cameras I, as they haven't adapted. I do have some things to say. I know people out there are like, oh, what are you talking about? I do have some things to say about what a photographer has to offer that the iPhone can't replicate. Yeah. But we'll get into that later. Because oh. I think photographers are safe in so many ways. But I do think it's just interesting that the iPhone is eating up a huge part of the market. Like, who really needs, uh, you know, like people have like the point and shoot cameras. Who needs that anymore? 
Why, why is that even a market? It's way worse than this. Yeah, photographers with no self-esteem are freaking out because they think the only thing that separates them from everybody is the size of their camera and the cost of their camera. Yeah. But we're not camera operators. We're no. not just, we're not like just a, a truck button, driver sure. whose value is in the truck that they drive. No, this is something that we, this is a value that we offer composition, lighting, posing, these types th of things that go beyond just... Uh, the the gear that we carry with us another new feature is portrait lighting which is available on both the front and back and again it's pretty amazing in that it can add studio lighting effects the kind effects that look a lot like a beauty dish to they me. look very similar i will say have a having a discerning eye this looks a little bit corny to me but yeah. i still think it looks really good well it is they're announcing it in beta which I actually appreciate them okay. disclosing that it's not quite done yet. Because it doesn't look, yeah, it yeah. looks like it could use some work. It it does, but, but we can see where it's tracking. Where it's going, and that's exactly what I was going to say. We see where this is going. They're trying to get pretty serious with it, and photos are a huge part of people's lives now. Um, and it's a billion-dollar industry. I mean, so many people posting, posting photos on Instagram have sponsors. It's becoming people's lives. It's becoming people's livelihood. And the iPhone's cashing in on that. So have you seen, there are a lot of photographers whose specialty is in post-processing. And one of the techniques they'll do is they'll go through and they'll do contouring on people's faces. Mm -hmm. where they do dodging and burning to bring out the shadows and highlights in somebody's face and make them look just extra beautiful. Yeah. That is now being implemented in software in real time. So you can see it as you hold your phone up. You can see the contouring effects. And wow. that's exactly what it's doing. They've just taken those Photoshop techniques and put it into their little specialized CPU, and it's pretty amazing. But that means that all those jobs are going to be less necessary. They'll still be there for high end stuff, right? But for the casual user, the stuff, the stuff, the jobs in the middle, uh, a lot of those will disappear as it's happening automatically in software, and that's satisfying more and more people. I just had a couple of different uh, examples of these slides here. Just the fact that it's bringing out the shadows and looking at the face and understanding where the eyes are, where the cheekbones are, um, separating the foreground subject from the background subject so that you can take a picture on a busy, crowded city street and have it look pretty much exactly like you were standing in front of a black backdrop with uh, specialized lighting pointing directly at you. You can completely eliminate the background or just blur it a little bit. In theory. Yeah, this is based on Apple's own kind of controlled examples. Um, and I'm sure the first, first, first version isn't going to be perfect. But I'm also sure in two years it'll be pretty perfect. I think it's going to be pretty good, yeah. Um, I want to go through and compare just the features of the new iPhone X against a typical SLR, just like not a specific model. I just picked a stock picture. This is just a picture. Yeah, I'm not like it's picking on the, the D3100. <laughs> just any camera. Just any camera. Here's some of the features that the iPhone X has for photographers. For video, it has 4K and 60P and 1080P and 20, 240 frames per second, whereas um, almost no cameras nowadays offer 4K. Almost none of the DSLRs do. Some of them do. But when they do, it's 4K at 30P. Yeah. So half the frame rate. They're actually behind, behind. Unless you're shooting a GH5, you're probably shooting at a lower frame rate. They have software-based features like panoramas. Um, I do this all the time. I'll pick up my iPhone and just stitch a panorama. And I know it's some so much cameras easier. have had panoramas built in, but they don't work nearly as nicely and smoothly, and so I never do them. They also have things like image stacking. Like I can take a 10-second slow shutter effect on my iPhone with an app, by putting it in a tripod, but I can't do that on any camera. I have to go uh, rig up an ND filter or bring the pictures onto my computer later and try to post-process them, but it happens in the camera automatically. Yeah, that's a nice feature. Yeah, you can dial in an ISO of one if you want to and get that effect. Um, you can do all of your editing and all of your sharing right on your phone, which is your camera. I think that's nice because uh, so many people don't want those extra steps and they don't want to have to learn something different editing if you're doing it on your phone then it's just kind of all integrated and it's easy and the editing apps are kind of streamlined and intuitive so it's making photography more accessible certainly 
Yeah, when we go we go to press events with other photographers reviewing cameras, and you'd be shocked at how many of the, pe the people there are sharing pictures in real time from their smartphones and not. They'll put down the camera that they're reviewing, pull out their I smartphone. I do that. Yeah, well, it's we, just easier. We I mean, all do because if you it's don't need it to be. Behind. If you don't need the quality of the photo to be exceptional, or if it's not artistic in any way, if I'm just documenting, right. sure, pull out my smartphone and use that. Here's a big one: no current camera can do live streaming. But live streaming is booming. Live we stream. live stream all the all time day. from our phones. And everybody is. And nobody has addressed this except for, well, DJI is. Somehow I can live stream from a drone flying in the air, <laughs> but not from my GH5 or any of my Canon or Nikon cameras or the smartphone in my pocket. They just, they're just that far beyond. Um, the depth mapping, as I discussed before, no camera has that, but that would be, if you're, if your camera could do depth mapping, that would be so helpful. It would help you focus so much easier. If your camera could identify different parts of the face and then the depth of that subject, that could be extremely innovative for auto-focusing systems on cameras. Yeah, or if it could just pass that information through to Photoshop so that Photoshop could know from the accurate depth map what was in the background. So you could easily drop the focus, you know, like de defocus it or drop the exposure of it. Uh, the screens on real cameras, they suck compared to your iPhone. Just hold up your iPhone side by side with your real camera. And especially in bright sunlight, you won't be able to see your real camera, but you'll be able to see your iPhone. Yeah. Uh, the iPhone X in particular is bigger, brighter, sharpier, sh sharper. Sharpier. <laughs> <laughs> Contrastier. Wow, you're really zingy today, sir. And it has a proper OLED display, which means blacks are like very black, black. Yeah. Um, the fat, the focusing on the iPhone X and even other iPhones is actually faster than a lot of cameras that we use, especially entry level cameras, especially cameras that would probably cost the same as the iPhone 10 at a thousand bucks, are probably focusing slower. It's amazing how fast the focusing has gotten, and they have like phase detect focusing. Now. Yeah. Um, they can focus anywhere in the frame, even out at the corners. Whereas like if you pick up a new entry level DSLR, it will only focus like right in the middle. They have, uh, yeah, that can be one. nice because then you can, you don't have to focus and recompose. You're looking at the picture that you want. Everything is exposed the way that it will look when you see the final picture. You don't, it's not like a viewfinder where you have to just kind of have that intuition for your settings and what your picture will turn out. Like, you know, what's going to be there and then you can just tap where you want to focus. And it, it re it resets your exposure as well, so it's so much easier. That's something I didn't even mention, but yeah, the the auto exposure system can find faces in the frame and expose properly for the faces, so it can have way more intelligence than a DSLR could. They have GPS built in. I don't know why some cameras do, but very few cameras have GPS built in. Um, naturally, there's a selfie screen which they implement by actually putting an extra lens on the other side of the camera. Um, most cameras nowadays don't have selfie screens, but some do. They have this true tone flash that can actually change the white balance of the flash to match that in the room and give you more natural pictures. No cameras can do that. Why can't any real camera do that? But my smartphone can. Um, they have built in storage. My phone now has 256 gigs of storage, but some of the Android phones, you can actually put another card in there and get 512 gigs of storage. Whereas when you get your camera, you have to put in SD cards and kind of manage these things in and out. And if you forget it, then you're out of luck. I don't know why they don't build some storage into real cameras just yeah. for convenience sake. Uh, the, the iPhone X and most new phones are waterproof. Somewhat waterproof, like, yeah. Submersible. That's nice because people worry all the time about their gear. I, we were stuck in a particularly bad rainstorm. I put my camera inside of my backpack. It wasn't waterproof and the camera still got totaled. Didn't work anymore. And and how did we film that moment? With our phone. Yeah, I pulled my phone out because I knew, like, oh, it's fine. I can still use my phone to capture this. It's ridiculous. And, and it's... Hmm? Go ahead. I was going to say it's easy to bring with you everywhere. It just fits in your pocket. Whatever. You don't think about it. Unlike a DSLR where you say, oh, we're going to dinner. I don't think I could bring this. I might, might take up a lot of room or be a pain or hurt my shoulder. Mm -hmm. All these things, it's just... The iPhone has so much on a traditional camera. Um, and just pick up your camera and go through the menu system and then pick up your iPhone and go through its menu system. 
and just see how different the user interface is. All cameras now have user interfaces that are from like 15 years ago. It's embarrassing, and I don't know why they can't implement a proper user interface, but it's so backwards. So it's amazing how iPhone camera technology has developed and really left cameras in the dust. Uh, we talked about this a little bit, but you also have your editing software built in. You literally have Lightroom. It's not as though you're using Snapseed or something or you're relying on just Instagram to edit your photos. You can do those things if you don't want to get deep into the editing. But I use Lightroom on my iPad. You can use Lightroom on your phone. And it's excellent. I use it on my iPad and it's faster than on my computer. And I still have a little pen. I have the Apple pen. It's awesome. I sat on a flight and I get a ton of pictures edited because I just had this nice light iPad and I could edit on the screen. It's easy to hold, works well, is fast. I mean, that's one of my favorite things is just getting the editing done easily. Yeah. And Adobe in particular is pouring way more energy into their mobile apps than into their desktop apps. So we're going to see these catch up and probably surpass the desktop apps in features. I think that's the future. But also every other app developer out there has made all sorts of apps that work the camera in ways that you could never do on a traditional camera. And we kind of talked about a lot of this in our future of photography video where we were really hoping that the traditional camera industry would meld with these new apps and the software, software technology because there's so much that you can do with your pictures using software. And camera manufacturers like Nikon, Canon, Sony, they haven't caught up with what you can do with software. So it'd be nice to merge them together and get all of this convenience of your smartphone with the quality of a traditional camera and the control really as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the cameras still have some advantages. It's the lenses, right? Yeah, the lenses are incredible. And I still, you know, if I, I like backlighting, I don't know, it's kind of controversial. Some people don't like it, but I do like backlighting. I like that it looks nice and soft. When I use the iPhone, I get those awful green solar flares, not even pretty solar flare ugly it looks like just two green blobs um so the lenses aren't quite there they're not as nice yeah and we did astrophotography the other night and i was using a 14 millimeter f2.8 that's not something i could do on an iphone now no not not now nor yeah. could we do wildlife photography we'll use a 500 or 600 millimeter lens and you, you really can't get that on an iphone now at um least. there are more megapixels on a camera which you know might be thinking, why do I need those if you are an iPhone photographer? Well, the resolution of your photo is much better. And if you take a picture with a traditional camera, um, you can crop your photo and still have a nice, clean, clear photo. The iPhone, once you start zooming in or if you try to print your picture, you're going to see that lack of megapixels there. It just doesn't look good. Even that... Uh, Apple is taking that head on. They're producing huge billboards saying shot on iPhone. Yeah, but aren't they, they look like, great. are those a bunch of pictures stitched together? Or is that just the lighting is incredible? I don't know. But I mean, it's also the viewing distance, like the image is big, but you're watching it from 200 feet away in your car. Um, if you were standing up next to it, certainly the D850 image would look vastly, vastly better but they're kind of tricking people. They're also, I think it was Time Magazine, they shot a series of covers using an iPhone. So the magazine, eight and a half by 11, will with the bleed, um, will look just fine. It will look just fine, and most people won't notice any difference. It doesn't mean that every commercial photographer is gonna start using an iPhone. There's still distinct advantages to it. The cameras still kick butt in many, many well, ways. But here's the other thing. I don't always want my camera to do what my smartphone thinks I want to do. Does that make sense? So I'll do a long exposure and drag it and then get a surreal photo. Or you want to keep your shutter open longer for something like night photography or uh, to get a long exposure and get people blurred in the frame. If you're an artist, you want to control your camera because you don't always want to do the typical type of photography. The smartphone, still very limited in that capacity. Yeah, but I think the choice people used to make when they picked up their cameras was, uh, well, they'd be giving up convenience as they're, they have to buy something more expensive, they have to carry this big thing around, but their images are going to be better. But now it gets a little more complex. Now when you pick up your camera, you're giving up all those other things that we talked about that the iPhone X had. Yeah. And you're taking on quite a bit of burden. 
just for the sake of more powerful lenses and more megapixels. And for me, I'm going to happily make that choice. I still carry a camera around with me everywhere. But for more and more people, they're going to be faced with that choice and they're not going to be picking up their cameras or buying the next camera. I, here's the other thing. I also like different lenses create different effects. And I guess that eventually they could have apps for that. You could get like a wide angle lens effect or they're doing a lot with it with um, and software with blurring the background. They could eventually create different bokehs and bokehs and uh, like textures and things like that. And that's what I'm doing with lenses now. But they haven't gotten there yet, and I think that their artificially blurred background looks pretty corny, and I would never... It's not perfect, It's yeah. not perfect. It cuts into clothes and mm -hmm. hair and stuff, and I didn't. I wouldn't do that professionally. I wouldn't post a picture like that. So they have a ways to go, and there's still things that I need as a photographer from a traditional camera system. Yeah. I, I mean, I use my phone all the time. doesn't mean I'm moving on. I also think you can't show up as a wedding photographer with your iPhone now. You know, the carrying your camera around carries some weight to it. You look like a more serious photographer. True. Uh, let's You're really about... carrying literally more weight around, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Audible is sponsoring this. They make audio books that you can listen to while you're on the go. Uh, they even have a feature called Whisper Sync, where if you're reading an ebook on your phone, you can, you know, if you go to hop in your car, you can pick up right where you left off and listen to the audiobook. And then when you step out of your car and you're waiting in line, at the coffee shop, you can be reading it on your Kindle. I like that feature. I like to listen and read. Yeah, I like that the convenience of being able to switch between different formats. And I was going to talk about my experience reading it, which, well, the audiobook is just about 45 hours long. Yeah. I read the paperback book, which is like 1,100 or 1,200 pages. Wow. And it's an epic book. Um, and then we recently saw the movie here. So if you like the movie, um, you'll probably love the book because while it's a big time commitment, a lot of people have some time to kill. You know, if you have an hour drive into work and an hour back, you can polish this book off in a month and you'll have so much more of a deeper experience because the the book it and the audiobook are there it's a horror story, but it's a much deeper story about uh, the fears of childhood and how they affect you as an adult. And that's something that the movie to me really didn't convey. The book yeah. itself is laid out in a very different structure, alternating between childhood scenes and then the same scenes. Are you saying you think the book is better? Uh, it, yeah. The book is better. Well, it's it's just different. It's a yeah. deeper experience because it, the real the book itself was about this metaphor. It was not about scary clowns. It was about the the things that we're afraid of as a child and how they affect us as adults. But you wouldn't necessarily pick that up. Maybe when you watch the second part of it. Not that I want to spoil anything, but there's So you can hop in your chapter. car and put on your your it audiobook and then show up at work feeling like a weirdo. You're like, what about my childhood fears? <laughs> I have listened to a lot of horror stories on audiobooks and it can be really scary. It's intense. On long drives. It can be really intense, yeah. Well, Give it a try. You can head to audible.com slash photo and get yourself a free trial. And that will even get you a free audiobook. And maybe it will be it. Check it out. Maybe it will be it. That's audible.com slash photo. That's audible.com slash P-H-O-T-O. Maybe people can read it with you and then tell you their childhood fears. <laughs> I would love that. That would be a great podcast. Or their photographer fears. They'll be like, I fear... I'm going to be put out of business by Apple. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be our next book. I was looking at the progression of technology in phones and in cameras. And the iPhone 4, which came out in 2010, had five megapixels. Potato. Potato. And then the iPhone 10 has 12 megapixels. So we're making some real jumps. I mean, the Canon T3 in 2011 had 12 megapixels. So having the the new iPhone 10 is going to be like having an entry level DSLR in 2011, mm -hmm. but better because it's small and it has all these cool effects. I mean, again, all the same points. You don't get the lenses, you don't get as much control, but you have the same resolution and you have some features that make photography easier. I'm curious to see where this goes in another five six years. Yeah, if they actually surpass them in just more technical ways, I think it's a distinct possibility, especially with computational photography. I got nerdy and looked at DxOMark mobile scores, 
and yeah, you the progression did. of those from 2010 to 2016. Um, for the iPhone, as well as comparing it to the Canon 5D series of cameras. And for those listening, Chelsea, uh, what does the, the Canon chart look like? It's pretty steady, slightly upward. Yeah, it goes from, it starts out in like an 80 in 2010 and just kind of goes up to, I think, like a 90, 92, 93 in 2016. Um, and the iPhone chart? Well, from 2010 to 2011, it just skyrockets upward and it just plateaus, then jumps up and it gets better and better. So it goes from about a 50 to well, like an 88. Yeah. Yeah, ex exactly. exactly right. So uh, why did it get cameras, worse for a while there? Yeah, they just scored one of the iPhone models. A Why'd you do worse that? The previous generation, but then they bounce back. So the iPhones and smartphones in general are improving at a really steep pace, whereas cameras are improving at a very shallow pace. They just, every new generation of camera we test, we look at, compared to the previous model, and we're like, yeah, it's very slightly better, but well, they're improving really get different things. Yeah, I guess. It's true. I, mean, I wonder where they're going to meet. When do you think they'll meet? Um, I don't know. It could be really soon. <sighs> where does that leave us? For the more serious photographers, we're seeing a, a line of accessories that allow you to get more serious pictures, like the Godox, um, I think it's the A1, will allow you to trigger your entire set of studio strobes from your smartphone. Cool. So now you have a command of your studio lights, finally, along with remote control over those lights, all from your smartphone. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of add-on lenses that will allow you to get, say, super wide-angle shots or telephoto I've shots. Tried those, yeah. And they do get you those focal lengths. The quality's not, you're certainly not shooting Can I tell you, though, at that point, it's just defeating the point for me. Like, if I have to start putting lenses on my iPhone to get worse pictures than my camera, then I'm going through, it's too much. It's too much. I'd rather just have my camera. If I care that much, I'm bringing my camera. Yeah, I totally agree. I hate those add-ons. I hate lenses. those little lenses. Sorry. We Sorry, have, lens, little lens people. We have uh, tripods and gimbals specifically for the smartphone. So gimbals yeah. that will give you like nice, smooth, drone-like handheld video footage. Um, as well as like more complex mics, you can hook up your wireless labs into your smartphones now and control everything from it. So these are coming along because smartphones do stuff that real cameras don't like, most notably live streaming. A lot of people want us to live stream yeah. to Facebook or YouTube. We got some accessories so that we could live stream from our phones. Yeah. Okay. And you know what else I discovered the other day? Um, there's like live special effects and video from your phone. I got some app and I made a spaceship appear in our yard. Mm -hmm. What? I have no idea how to do that in After Effects. Would you do that in After Effects, Justin? Uh, no, that's that's a little beyond my scope at this point. <laughs> yeah, but like in theory, could you do it? Oh in yeah, Effects? yeah, you definitely use something like that. But you that. personally can't do it in After Effects. Uh, not a good-looking version of it. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see your version I. of it. <laughs> All right, that's your next project. So, because there <laughs> is this app infrastructure where an app developer can make some special effects app that makes a spaceship appear in your live video, we're going to see a ton of this stuff. Video quality <laughs> and production values will yeah. really skyrocket on the phone, whereas they're going to pretty much stay the same on everybody's real cameras because there's no extensible software infrastructure available to them. You're stuck with whatever software the manufacturer gave you, and just, it will probably never get updated. I just imagine every single UFO movie having the same corny little floating spaceship from their phone. <laughs> really low budget. <laughs> We're like, wow. Um, I'll also say, yeah, photographic trends are supporting this movement. Yeah, because as I was talking about earlier, a lot of people are making money from their Instagram photos. They're becoming uh, influencers. And so people want it to look more authentic. Ads have become more authentic. Nobody wants a pop-up. Nobody wants to, something super scripted anymore. There are literally people just pretending they like things. And a part of that is more authentic posing. So people aren't using artificial backgrounds as much or artificial lighting. Um, everything's less posy. People are looking more natural. It's different. And a lot of those photos are only viewed on a smartphone. So you don't need that a really incredible resolution that we were talking about earlier. It's not going to be posted on a billboard necessarily. 
if they're advertising on social media, they know it will probably be viewed on a smartphone. Yeah, so photographer skills are still important, but the skills that you developed at Olin Mills in the 80s, you're not going to use a lot of those? You shut your mouth. But the new skills are... I just use that on Instagram. Storytelling and lighting and, you know, which background do you choose and how do you get a good natural expression out of somebody? How do you pick clothes that aren't wild and distracting? So I will say... This is reassuring for you photographers that use a traditional camera because the phone can't replace you. It can't replace your creativity or your mind or your ability to compose something or find the right light or go out during the right time of the day to the right place where the right people are. It can't do all of that. And isn't that really the hard work? I think that's the hard stuff. So that's all of the things that the phones, I don't think we'll be able to do for a very long time. Yeah, just because a smartphone might beat a camera in some ways doesn't mean non-photographers will beat photographers. I have, Absolutely not. Yeah, and I've seen people, um, now that this whole kind of like influencer lifestyle is popular, I've seen people try to replicate it, and it looks really easy, and then it's not. And when you see it done poorly, you kind of get an understanding of how difficult it actually is to pull off. There's a huge difference between a good photographer with a smartphone and a non-photographer with a smartphone. You can look at people's Instagrams, yeah. they shoot them with a smartphone, and they will be stunning or terrible. Yeah. The, your skills still make by far the biggest difference. And we see more and more people involved in photography and wanting to learn photography. This is still a growing field. It's just the cameras are changing. I definitely, though, like, dirty secret. I've had people ask me which camera to get, and I've seen that their pictures really lack kind of, like, Basic, they have basic problems like composition and lighting and stuff. I want to say to them, like, maybe just practice on your smartphone first and get all that stuff right and figure out what you like and what you're going to take pictures of and then get a more complicated camera. I don't, it's getting harder to recommend a camera to everyone. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. It Tony, is. tell me about your future. I I think new cameras will have new smartphone cameras will have more lenses on them. Um, some cameras already have super wide angle lenses. Mm -hmm. We'll see that on an iPhone, I'm sure, as well as more telephoto lenses. Now they go out to the new one has a 56 millimeter equivalent lens. I'm sure we'll, the next generation will have a hundred millimeter, and you'll start to be able to do sports and stuff. Um, they've already demonstrated this. I think it was MIT demonstrated in software that they could take a picture, map somebody's face, and then change the proportions of the face to simulate say maybe having a shot baby. with a 200 millimeter oh. lens or make it look like a baby or that you have a crazy party hat on. <laughs> um, but, you know, as a portrait photographer, you know the difference between shooting somebody with a 50 millimeter and a 200 millimeter lens. The 200 is more flattering. Well, like the, it compresses the image. Yeah, but 50 millimeters might exaggerate it some, making your forehead look bigger, your nose look bigger, bigger. So the new sort of AI algorithms can change the shape of the face to simulate those telephoto focal lengths without you know simply cropping so i'm sure that we'll see that in, the, in a future version of the portrait mode on the iphone um i was wondering if they were actually going to um start guiding people's compositions mm. so there could be something in the camera where if you hold it up and there are people they could say oh like move people into this space to get a more balanced composition or these are your prominent elements. They could use color and form and shape and say, these are your prominent elements. Try moving the camera or even just having you scan a scene and then locking into elements that would make like uh, the rule of thirds or maybe leading lines or something. I mean, in theory, all of that could be automated. That's a great point. You know, have you ever, I know I you, just made it. <laughs> you've used That's a design it. app when you, you drop an object into the page and it will yeah. show you, at the point when you have the two side margins equal. Yeah. It could do that. You yes. can move your phone around and it'd be like, okay, wait, now you have a, a reasonable balance around the edges of the frame. What if it gets snarky on you? Like, it's like, did you mean to cut off that person's head like that and uh, crop it? It's called the rule of thirds. <laughs> Shut up, Siri. <laughs> oh, if it was Siri, then we, it would, nobody would use it. Um, I can't wait for auto tagging. This software already exists. Like Google, uh, has this and it works really well. Microsoft has it where it could uh, see, you know, it could let you to find, let you find all the pictures of your dog or all the pictures that include your Oh, it kind of does that. 
Oh, it does that already? Yeah, it categorizes people. I think if you go into your photo libraries, um, you see people. Uh, I think oh. that you can drag your favorite people and then make albums. I'm not sure if it does it automatically, but maybe. So it's doing some face recognition now. I was more thinking about um, like objects, like maybe it can figure out all the pictures you've taken of your food or all the times you've <laughs> had tacos instead of omelets. And then they're going to send that information to Google and then they're mm -hmm. going to judge you. They're going to be like, you're eating a lot of omelets. Are you okay? Like, don't you think that's enough bacon, Tony? Maybe try something else. <laughs> Uh, I think they'll be able to improve image quality by over capturing. Like when you t take one picture, it'll take 20 pictures and then it will pick the sharpest one or it will pick the 10 sharpest ones and stack them together, thus like eliminating any noise. Uh, I think for video, they'll be able to do uh, automatic audio noise reduction and improvement. So if you're recording a video, it could give you that would sound be nice, that Justin. Like these mics. Right, Justin's like, hell yeah, sign me up for the future. <laughs> yeah, it could automatically remove your neighbor's lawnmower from the background, and just give you crystal clear sound. Yeah, like, Why in not? life, I would just wear headphones. And background improvement and replacement—that's cool. It could, going back to what you were saying, Tony, detect things in your images and then try to sell you other things. I saw you have a TV, but no speakers. You want to <laughs> click once and we'll send them to you? Just saying, the future's scary and exciting. Don't even get me started on TVs. These things are going to kill TVs, too. <gasps> oh, Ooh. yeah. Ten years from now, I don't think we'll all be gathering around a TV anymore. Uh, and, and I think future photography trends, the iPhone is well positioned for, like, 3D would just involve sticking another lens on there. Uh, 360, it could take front and back lenses and make 360 video out Ooh. of it. And VR would be the same setup as uh, 3D and 360. And I don't see that camera manufacturers are well positioned for these forthcoming markets at all. This is kind of going out. What is auto llama? Uh, automatically add Adding llamas llama. to your images oh. as necessary. Yeah, yeah, like if your picture is boring. Yeah. It'll be like, wow, like your life is boring. there are no llamas that can detect boring. it. You're at your kid's soccer game again. Let's add a T-Rex to this. <laughs> there you go. Let's spice it up, Karen. Well, tell us your thoughts. Uh, what is your camera doing that a smartphone could never do? And uh, what can camera <laughs> companies do to keep up and surpass the monster that is Apple and Google? as they march forward at an extremely fast pace. And thank you to our sponsor, Audible. Yeah, thank you, Audible. And if you want to get a free audiobook, go to audible.com slash photo. That's audible.com slash P-H-O-T-O. And try it out. You're going to like it. It's going to make your commute much more interesting or terrifying. Either way, it's better. Thanks. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.